Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer. Um, this will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube later on for those of you that want, want to catch up, etc. Um, excuse me while I just redo the settings. Right. Um, 26th of August, nobody's um, Saints Day, as I often say, it's that saint with most days, Saints Days in the year, Saint Nobody. The psalm this evening will be Psalm 114, and the readings are taken from uh, the second book of Samuel and Luke's book of Acts chapter 9. Um, this is the one that is on the uh, Church of England webpage. There's no live, ultra live video with words down by the side tonight because basically I freely admit I didn't have time to set that up today. So let's take a moment to compose ourselves as we remember all that's happened. And in our thoughts tonight, we remember the people of Afghanistan, especially those around Kabul airport. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of the light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 114. And we'll say it together. Excuse me. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from the people of a strange tongue, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea saw that and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you were driven back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the hard rock into a pool of water, the flint stone into a singing well, springing well. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Strike the rock of our hard hearts, O God, and let our tears of joy and sorrow mould us to bear the imprint of your love given in Christ our risen Lord. Reading is taken from the second book of Samuel, chapter 15, beginning to read at the 13th verse. A messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the Israelites have gone over to Absalom. Then David said to all his officials who were with him at Jerusalem, Get up, let us flee, or there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Hurry, or he will soon overtake us and bring disaster down upon us, and attack the city with the edge of the sword. The king's officials said to the king, 
Your servants are ready to do whatever our Lord the King decides. So the King left, followed by all his household, except ten concubines whom he left behind to look after the house. Excuse me. The King left, followed by all the people, and they stopped at the last house. All his officials passed by him, and all the Carathites and all the Pelathites and all the six hundred Gittites who had followed him from Gath passed on before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why are you also coming with us? Go back and stay with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your home. You came only yesterday. And shall I today make you wander about with us, while I go wherever I can? Go back and take your kinsfolk with you, and may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. But Ittai answered the king, As the Lord lives, and as the Lord my king lives, wherever my lord the king may be, whether for death or for life, there also your servant will be. David said to Ittai, Go then, march on. So Ittai the Gittite marched on, with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. The whole country wept low, as all the people passed by. The king crossed the Wadi Kidron, and all the people moved on towards the wilderness. Abiathar came up, and Zadok also, with all the Levites, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. They set down the Ark of God until all the people had passed out of the city. Then the king said to Zadok, Carry the Ark of God back into the city. If I find favours in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and let me see both it and the place where it remains. But if he says I take no pleasure in you, here I am, let him do to me what seems good to him. The king also said to the priest Zadok, Look, go back to the city in peace, you and Abiathar, with your two sons, Ahimaaz, your son, and Jonathan, son of Abiathar. See, I will wait at the fort of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. Oh, excuse me, it's been a long day. But David went up the ascent of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, with his head covered and walking barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up, weeping as they went. David was told that Athiopel was among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray you, turn the counsel of Athopel into foolishness. When David came to the summit where God worshipped, Hushai the Aikite came out to him with his coat torn and earth on his head. David said to him, If you go with me, you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past, so now I will be your servant, then you will defeat for me the council Ahithophel. The priests Zadok and Abiathar will be with you there. So whatever you hear from the king's house, tell it to the priests Zadok and Abiathar. Their two sons are with them, Zadok's son Ahimaaz and Abiathar's son Jonathan, and by them you shall report to me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, just as Absalom was entering Jerusalem. Here ends the reading. We say the canticle. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord the God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence 
than your just for your just dealings have been revealed to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor glory and might for ever and ever amen all nations shall come and worship you o christ and share in the feast of your kingdom <clears throat> Our second reading is taken from the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at verse 32. Now, as Peter went here, here and there among the, all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralysed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up, and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put them all outside. Then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Here ends the second reading. Excuse me one moment. We will say the Magnificat together. You have filled the hunger with good things and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. And from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children, forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. For a time of prayer tonight, I thought we'd do things, things slightly differently. Um, I will introduce a topic, and then we will have some silent prayer, pray silently amongst ourselves about that topic. So let us pray. We pray tonight for people in Afghanistan, Kabul.
or the collapse of a, a government there. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. We pray for our world at this time, as we seek to right the wrongs of man's greed and destruction of nature. We pray for all the pilgrims journeying towards the environmental summit being held in the north. We pray that they may ar arrive safely. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. We pray for our country, for our friends and families in this time of pandemic. We pray for proactive, not reactive government, for looking ahead for trying to see where the dangers lie and to mitigate it before it gets too great. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. We pray for our town. We give thanks for all the good that is done. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. We pray for all those we know who are sick or ill, who are stressed. We pray especially at this time for Martin, about to undergo an operation. We pray that it may go well. And we pray for all those we know who rest on our hearts as needing God's intercession and intervention. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. 
We pray for all those who have died, those who rest on our hearts, those who remember but see no more. And we pray for all their families and friends who miss them. And we pray for God's love and healing hand. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening. It is um, the usual. There will be a Saturday bulletin coming out via email. And Sunday morning, I think we're at St. Mary's at 10.30 and the Minster at 11, which will be live streamed. And uh, thank you for joining me. And I shall now try and stop this live stream. Ah, oh, there we are. There's the button. Good night, everybody, and have a, a wonderful weekend as well. <laughs>